welcome to Was It Something I Said, the panel show that celebrates the world of quotations. And you can quote me on that. <laughs> German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche once said, We should consider every day lost in which we have not danced at least once. By which reckoning, I have lost 13,941 days out of a possible 13,948. <laughs> On Richard Iwadi's team is comedian Ed Byrne, and with Mickey Flanagan tonight is sports broadcaster Gabby Logan. <laughs> and here to read out our quotations is someone who once said that the worst thing you can be is skint and famous. Well, that's after being skint and having Ebola. <laughs> He's got the actor and star of Quadrophenia, Phil Daniels. <laughs> so, do you have experiences of being skint and famous? I do. I used to um, queue up at the job centre after I'd sort of done quite a lot of work and uh, stand there in the queue with everybody else and people would go, give me your autograph, mate, and you're really good in that, and it was quite... Bit embarrassing, you know. Are you sure it was autograph hunters? Because you know you do have to sign on. <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy, you know, in a tie. Was he behind the was counter? He behind the desk? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gabby, what's your favourite quotation? One has just sprung to mind, actually, which is, uh, is is sublimely quite a feminist quote by Ginger Rogers, who said, "Women do everything that men do except backwards in high heels," referring to dancing, of course. Yes. And actually, I think without getting too deep. That's kind of life, isn't it? Women do everything that men do, but backwards in high heels. I th Come I th on, ladies! Yeah, yeah. Yes! <laughs> yeah. They don't go on about it, though, yeah. do they? That's what I like about women. They never go on about how much they do. They just keep it inside. They just sold you on. You think maybe it's the fact that they keep doing everything backwards in high heels is why they don't get paid as much as men? <laughs> no, it's a fair... It's Some things are supposed to be done <laughs> forward. It's very rare that someone says, uh, as a compliment, that your boss would say, you've done this all backwards. What about it's moonwalking? Very rare. <laughs> Can you moonwalk in high heels? I think if you've made your sales, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, our opening round is called threesomes. Our panellists have to guess which of three famous people said a particular quotation. And you can play along at home by following at something I said on Twitter to unlock some extra clips. This week's threesomes theme is fashion. And can we have the first quotation, please, Phil? I don't believe in fad clothing. There are so many fads in fashion, and they're here today and gone tomorrow. Who said it? Was it superstar pianist Liberace, fashion designer Vivian Westwood, or TV presenter Noel Edmonds? <laughs> Noel Edmonds. <laughs> Do you think Noel Edmonds? I think it has to be, because I can imagine him saying, doing that round the word fad, <laughs> which is clearly in inverted commas. Yeah. Liberace's found one fashion, he found that look and he never changed it, did he? He never camped it up or anything, did he? <laughs> <laughs> he's actually, he's leaning quite casually for someone dressed quite so extravagantly, don't you think? Extravagantly? I think yeah. that <laughs> It looks like he's, he's got a job on the uh, shopping channel and he's sort of saying, there's only 15 of these left. <laughs> Send your apples in now. <laughs> <laughs> Say how you used talk. What to say? I don't want out there. <laughs> I'm not gay. <laughs> What, what are you doing now? Liberace! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Liberace! Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> my, Michael Douglas has got nothing on you. That is... <laughs> you try to do Liberace. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen a lot of him, but he used to go... <laughs> Hi there! <laughs> yeah. Only an 80s DJ would use the word fad. And that's Edmunds. So you're sure it's Edmunds? I don't I know. Think I, Edmunds. Didn't go. I think it's Vivian Westwood. Do you know what Vivian Westwood says about being a fashion designer? She says, I didn't want to be a fashion designer at all. For 15 years, I hated fashion. Well, she's fucked up, hasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> she's fucked that up royally. <laughs> People they essentially get steamrolled into jobs they didn't want to do. But you don't think, you don't imagine fashion designer as one of those jobs. Before I knew it, I was just designing complex patterns, manufacturing them, and making models wear them. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
was cleaning the toilets, you know, and the gentleman came and said, you should be in fashion, Mum. <laughs> now I've got to get these skid marks out. <laughs> That's a good first scene for the biopic. That's what I said. <laughs> Vivian, Vivian, what are you doing cleaning that toilet? Oh, I just love skids. <laughs> but you're doing it in such an elegant ball gown. I know, but um, <laughs> this toilet's not going to clean itself. I'm interested to note that Vivian Westwood clearly bought Margaret Thatcher's scalp at all. <laughs> Vivian Westwood used to have a shop on the King's Road with Malcolm McLaren, mm. and in 1975, Johnny Rotten auditioned to be lead singer of the Sex Pistols there. Didn't Johnny Rotten uh, also audition for your role in Quadrophenia, Phil? I think he did, actually. Did he get it? I think he might have done it. <laughs> <laughs> but he, they couldn't insure him. He didn't get it. I think he might have done. That would have been mad. Well, he would have played the role if they'd got the insurance. I mean, maybe it's apocryphal, but um, yeah. I hear that. How did your audition for it come up? Um, I was um, smoking a joint in a, a Zulu mud hut, and I got a phone call <laughs> saying, come over to uh, England and... Uh, were you actually oh. in a Zulu mud hut, or was it just really good gear you were smoking? <laughs> <laughs> It was good gear, yeah, and we were really in a Zulu mud hut, yeah. Were you in Zulu? No, I was in Zulu Dawn, the prequel to Zulu. Wow, that's... Yeah. We got beat, and that one. <laughs> Zulus win. If you'd won against the Zulus in Zulu Dawn, they'd have to then reshoot Zulu as just a normal day. <laughs> so we need an answer. Who said this? I, I think it's Vivian Westwood. Okay. Let's have Vivian Westwood, but I think it's Edmunds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and what's your answer? Back on to the Barracha. Liberace, Vivian Westwood. Well, the answer is Liberace. Uh, yeah. Well done. <laughs> what, uh, what problem did Liberace say he had with his outfits? They were obviously too heavy, so did he get some kind of chafing? I th I, I mean, that's, that's one of the most disgusting <laughs> concepts. <laughs> I think there is no doubt that Liberace had some sort of chafing. <laughs> he, did he used to get abuse from white van drivers? <laughs> As they went past, Liberace, sort you like that. <laughs> I, don't think he, I don't think he put himself in a position where too many white vans could drive past him. <laughs> Unless they're okay, why am I in Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> Vegas, and why does Liberace walk to work? <laughs> he said, he said about his outfits, I have to keep topping myself each time. Years ago, I could put on a colourful jacket and the world would scream. Now I have to go for shock value. <laughs> of course, Liberace never came out of the closet in his lifetime. I'm not surprised. He was probably snagged on a diamond-encrusted jumpsuit. <laughs> um, Phil, can we have our next quotation on the subject of fashion, please? You don't become a fashion icon without having your own very clear view of what is fashion. It's one of the same three. Could be Noel Edmonds, okay. could be Vivian Westwood, could be Liberace. But most people in fashion are a bit thick, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> They're thick and shallow and, oh, you're looking good today, darling. <laughs> darling, you're looking beautiful. By thick and shallow, do you mean foreign? <laughs> It wouldn't be even vaguely humorous if Vivian Westwood said it was. No. You know, I think well, maybe it's not vaguely humorous. It might not be. And Liberace would be, I don't know, cleverer, <laughs> more <laughs> interesting. You think Liberace would be cleverer than that? Yeah, I just think it would be more interesting. Noel Edmonds could easily have said it, because Noel Edmonds says anything while he's trying to fill time on Deal or No Deal. <laughs> I, I think any collection of words you could think to put together, at some point, they've fallen out of his beardy pie hole <laughs> as he's trying to make opening boxes interesting. The game is, when you record it, you've got to just watch it on Sky Plus so you don't have to <laughs> listen to Noel Edmonds at all. And just get the boxes opening all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it takes about 40 seconds to watch you the whole show. <laughs> of... <laughs> 40 episodes of Deal or No Deal, I've got to watch them in an hour. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. Two out of three of them have put their name to a clothing range. It's, Two it, out of it, three. It can't of be them. Noel Edmonds because he found a fashion back about 30 years ago and he thought, that's it, I'm done. I'm not worrying about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, men. Yeah. Men choose a point in their life 
and that's it. What Richard says is interesting because I know that Mickey was a Fred Perry man in the 80s and you had a Harrington jacket. I did have a Harrington jacket. And I know that from what you're wearing tonight. Thanks. <laughs> I think it's Edmund because he is incredibly more deluded than all of those other people. And also, you know he has a helicopter, mm. and so he apparently collects his supermarket shop in the helicopter. And so it's very easy. Um, I just call them up about an hour before I get in the helicopter. They clear the car park for me, and I just go in, <laughs> go out, pick up the food, come back in. I don't know why everyone doesn't do it. <laughs> Now I'm thinking about it, Vivian Westwood does have a weird style, a weird pattern, doesn't she? She looks like she possibly could smell of wee. <laughs> <laughs> That's two very different sorts of analysis, can <laughs> One, an in-depth analysis of syntax and then a, just a, an insult to an elderly person. <laughs> so what's your answer? Vivian Westwood. Vivian Westwood? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And I, what's your answer? We're I saying Noel Edmonds. You're Noel saying Edmonds. Noel Edmonds. Well, the answer is Noel ah. Edmonds. <laughs> this was his response in an interview in 2006 when asked about his fashion during his time presenting Saturday morning kids show Multicoloured Swap Shop. Who, who did Noel give a makeover to recently? A real human? No, not a real human. His car. Close. You're warm. He's helicopter. No, he gave a makeover to Candice the mannequin. Noel drives a black cab with a fully clothed mannequin called Candice sitting in the back to stop people from trying to <laughs> hate it. Candice's new look includes a fur coat, a big hat and a change in hair colour from blonde to brunette. <laughs> there is no way Noel Edmonds doesn't talk to Candice. There is no way when he is driving in that cab and he's got her in the back that he doesn't occasionally go, that was a good episode of Deal or No Deal today, wasn't it? <laughs> it's kind of, you know, all, it's a building up here a catalogue of eccentric behaviour which normally makes somebody more interesting and it just makes him less interesting and less desirable. As he Even less things. desirable than he currently <laughs> is? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see that man without thing. getting an erection. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't watch Deal or No Deal. I don't have the blood supply. <laughs> Neither of those quotations was from Vivian Westwood, who says, I always design for a parallel universe. Ah, that will be the one in which I buy her clothes, then. <laughs> the one with the frozen over hell. <laughs> so that's the end of the round. And I can tell you that it is a draw. Over the break, see if you can complete this quotation from Albert Einstein and a quote from 1950, the same year he published On the Generalised Theory of Gravitation. But then you knew that already. <laughs> if A is a success in life, then A equals X plus Y plus Z. Work is X, Y is play, and Z is... what? If the computer room in your house is free, why not use it to tweet your answer to at something I said? And we'll see you after the break. Welcome back to Was It Something I Said? Before the break, we asked you to complete this quotation from Albert Einstein. If A is a success in life, then A equals X plus Y plus Z. Work is X, Y is play, and Z is what? Was he quite randy? Um, not when I met him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, he was quite notoriously up for it. So I'm just wondering whether Z is sex. No, it's very <laughs> surprising. Oh, is it? And Z is boo! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the opposite. Oh! <laughs> Ser serenity, Buddhism. A bit like, yes, you're getting close. Not, not in contentment. No. Stop saying it like, no, oh, no, no <laughs> How is contentment the opposite of boo? Yeah, but boo, it's a, so certainty is, because boo is a surprise and certainty is not. I wouldn't say certainty is the opposite of boo. No, but there, well, there is. There are, as yet, there hasn't been a defined opposite of boo. Well, this is my, my pitch for the opposite <laughs> of <laughs> boo. Sure. <laughs> we'll be in the answer. You will know when Phil gives the answer what I have, <laughs> admittedly the on the hoof, <laughs> defined as the opposite of boo. <laughs> and, and I think, I already think I'm wrong. 
Unless it's... <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. That's the opposite of boo. <laughs> I would say... That... <laughs> I know now, Mike, you're not going to agree with my definition of the opposite of boo, so... But, Phil, please give the answer. If A is a success in life, then A equals X plus Y plus Z. Work is X, Y is play, and Z is keeping your mouth shut. Where was he? Prison? Put <laughs> <laughs> your head down, do your bird, do your time. <laughs> From your theory of relativity, when you get out, bang! Keep your mouth shut. mouth shut is the opposite to any word, not just boo. So that yeah. is absolutely not the opposite of boo. <laughs> no, but you see what I was thinking. If you creep up behind uh, someone and go... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, 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 I saw this coming. I don't really stand yeah, by it. All, all, all I can say is I was sincerely trying to help. <laughs> Why was Einstein a worry to his parents as a child? I think they thought he was slow at school yeah. or something like that. They did think he was very slow to the extent that he didn't really speak in full sentences until he was nine. And at last, at the supper table one night, he broke his silence to say, the soup is too hot. <laughs> <laughs> Greatly relieved, his parents asked him why he'd never said a word before. Einstein replied, because up to now, everything was in order. <laughs> <laughs> but, Dave, if you were a parent, how could you not resist if your child didn't say anything for nine years and suddenly went, the soup is cold, not say, shut up. <laughs> Well, it, we may have to thank the fact that Einstein's parents had no sense of humour for the general theory of relativity. Um, in 1919, Einstein married his cousin, Elsa, which actually breaks another law of relativity. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next round is called Key Words. We've taken a famous quotation and ripped two key words out of it, leaving it lying bloodied and bleeding on the floor. All the panel have to do is accurately work out what the original quote said. It's sort of CSI quotations. <laughs> Here's a quotation from one of Winston Churchill's speeches in 1940. You should know it as it's rather famous, so I'll award points to the team that gets closest to the exact wording. As your first clue, Phil, can we have two keywords, please? Beaches and fields. Now, nah, that's got to ring a few bells. Everyone thinks they know this. But let's see how close you can get to the actual quote. Was it, um, my favourite Bette Midler film <laughs> is Beaches. I, I wish she'd do something with Sally Fields. <laughs> something to do with war, isn't it? Because he liked to fight the fella, didn't yeah. he? <laughs> he liked to, he liked he, to fight. You know, he wanted to carry on into Russia at the end of the war. And they, that's why they got rid of him. It wasn't why they got rid of him. Was they got not? rid of him because he lost a general election. <laughs> and he, and it, yeah, it, was, it was a general election where he wasn't standing on a let's invade Russia. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, that would be was... quite ballsy. The new Tory <laughs> manifesto. Had enough of war. <laughs> no, you haven't. Come on. <laughs> he he think... used to sleep, didn't he, for about four, three, four hours during the day? And ate at night. <laughs> he had late nights and then naps. But he drank a lot during the day. And he, he drank a lot. Mm. He, he had black dog. Mm. He did have black dog. Mm. Yeah. Black dog was uh, is what his he depression. We call this depression, it, yeah. wasn't it? He had yeah. Depression. He was an alcoholic, and he slept a lot during the day. Mm. Sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have another. I'll give you another clue. A, a word that you might not definitely know is in this mm. quote, but you might. What's the Third word, please, Phil. Hills. Ah. This, this is alluding to that speech where he made and he was trying to buy up the country about saying, oh, we'll fight them here, we'll fight them in the front room, we'll fight them in the kitchen, <laughs> we'll fight them down the pub. <laughs> when, when are we going to stop fighting them? I don't know, we're just going to keep going. <laughs> it, was, it was, we'll fight them on the beaches, we'll fight them in the fields, not so much the hills. <laughs> <laughs> if they're in the hills, we'll wait till they come down the hill and we'll fight them on the flat bit next to the ice cream van. <laughs> yeah, I think you want the exact wording. We, what, the closest to the exact wording will get the much-prized point. Is it, we will fight them on the beaches, we will fight them in the fields and on the hills. We will never surrender. Mickey and Gabby, you have a go. We'll fight them... We'll fight them on... Does that to him? No, say it to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fight them on the beaches. We'll fight them on the... Fields, 
We'll fight them on the heels. That's our difference, is we're going to mm. say we'll fight them three times. Yeah. Any more? <laughs> oui. And I'll see you afterwards. <laughs> Great Britain will never surrender. Great Britain will never surrender. Right. Phil, can we have the exact words? We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. Yes. <laughs> so, I just wanted you to say park life at the end of park it. Park life. Yeah. Park. <laughs> You all thought it was we shall fight we shall them. them. It's just, them. It's just we shall fight. He didn't specify. I think it was assumed he meant the Germans, and he went beaches. None, none of you got landing grounds. So I don't know. I don't know who's closest. Can I point closest. out that I'm the only one not from this country, and that we didn't do this bit at school? Can't you were bloody that. neutral. Thanks very much. <laughs> Ed Byrne didn't help kill Hitler at all. <laughs> well, I think I think you both. Teams were close. I'm going to give you a point each. There you go. Okay. Um, this speech uh, of Churchill's was voted the greatest moment in radio history earlier this year. Why should it not have been? Well, have you heard Bruno Brooks? <laughs> <laughs> was it actually on television as opposed to radio? It wasn't on television. It wasn't on radio. It wasn't on radio. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Sony and the Radio Academy voted this speech the greatest moment in radio history, despite the fact that during the war, Churchill never recorded or broadcast this speech. Quotes from it were cited by a newsreader when it, at the same time as the speech, but it was never recorded or broadcast till after the war. So... A bit I mean, late. <laughs> <laughs> Churchill was famously witty, but some of his quotes are apocryphal. There's a story that tells of Churchill responding to news that the Lord Privy Seal, who had earlier disrespected in Parliament, wanted to see him, with the words, Tell the Lord Privy Seal that I'm sealed in the privy and can only deal with one shit at a time. <laughs> <laughs> time for another one. This is a quotation from actor and hellraiser Charlie Sheen after one of his many trips to rehab. It's not well known, so this time I'll award the points to whichever team gets nearest to it. As your first clue, Phil, can we have two key words, please? Tranquilizers and bourbon. Mm. Is that how I get for a parent's evening? <laughs> <laughs> I, I should say that we don't know it's bourbon. It could be bourbon. bourbon. Yeah, it could be referring to the, ah. the biscuit or, <laughs> or the French royal house. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I found that matches the soothing balm of tranquilizers injected directly into my neck is a cup of tea <laughs> and a bourbon biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Should we also leave open the possibility <laughs> that he's referring to the whiskey? <laughs> well, let's have the third key word to see whether it pushes us biscuitwards or whiskeywards or, and I'm alone on this one, I know, French, French royal housewards. <laughs> Phil. Joints. 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 Now, it doesn't mean... Phil's <laughs> helpful mind there. <laughs> might be, I was just helping might you be, out on your sort of, you might know. Might be an unhelpful mind. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was giving out on trick and treat night. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's his Ocado shopping list, just the one that he does every week. <laughs> Is it? What are you thinking? What are you thinking of opening a chain of? Tranquilizer bourbon joints. <laughs> <laughs> he kept going on at the time about how much he was abusing himself and saying he was still winning. So I think it might be the list of things he sort of said he was doing. And then, mm. and so then he was saying at the end, but I'm still winning. Now, this is a time he's just gone through a period of rehab when he says this. That okay, doesn't so narrow down no, time. So no, but, it's, with but, it may, but it may give you a clue as to his attitude, the right. attitude with which he said it. He said, rehab really worked for me. I'll just get through the day now with tranquilizers, bourbon and a few joints. Something along those yeah. lines. What do you Sounds reckon? Good. I think he probably used the word clean. Yeah, clean. You think, uh, now I'm clean, all I take are tranquilizers, bourbon and joints. OK, well, can we have the full quotation, please, Phil? There was a time when I couldn't leave the house until I smoked three joints, taken tranquilizers and drunk a bottle of bourbon. I don't think any of you deserve any points. <laughs> so, why does Sheen believe he's impervious to the dangers of addiction? Because he has tiger blood in his veins. 
Yes, you're absolutely right. He said, I probably took more than anybody could survive. I was banging seven gram rocks and finishing them because that's how I roll, because I have one speed, one gear. I'm different. I have a different constitution. I have a different brain. I have a different heart. I got tiger blood, man. Dying's for fools. Dying's for amateurs. <laughs> and I commend this budget to the House. <laughs> So that's the end of the round. And looking at the scores, I can see that once again the teams are tied. <laughs> Over the break, see if you can complete this quotation from Richard Maidley from the TV show Richard and Judy. When we first got together, one of the things me and Judy had in common was what? Tweet your answer to at something I said, and we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Was It Something I Said? Before the break, we asked you to complete this quotation from Richard Maidley. When we first got together, one of the things me and Judy had in common was... what? Any thoughts, panel? Was a love of Richard Maidley. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's definitely true, but he didn't have the self-knowledge to express it. Ah. A lust for life, an unbearable lightness of being, and a love for beauty and nature. That's a very Maidley-esque... Quote. That would be no. It's, it's not more that. than one thing as well, though, isn't it? It's so. a, no. It's a small. It's a small. Should we have one thing. of your clues? <laughs> yes, it's not true. Do you know a, you know a party popper? It's the opposite of that. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a small nerdy thing. A love of trains? No. A love of the Third Reich and what it. <laughs> It's so nearly achieved. <laughs> Is it like a love of stationery or something like that? Something in no. the office? It's an abstract thing. It's not a thing you can hold. You can't touch numbers. Yeah, Is it anything no. to do with numbers? Not numbers, it's, but it's... What's the, the opposite of numbers? The opposite, what's the opposite of numbers? <laughs> Deuteronomy. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not numbers, but it's, it's close to letters. Books! <laughs> Crosswords! No. The alphabet. What? Punctuation. <laughs> Grammar. 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 Uh, more Ooh. specific. Full stops. Oh, Colons. <laughs> Dashes. Your Ellipses. Brackets. Oxford commas. The big one. Spelling. Vertical. Full stops. Spelling. Capitals. Exclamation Spelling. marks. I can't believe you haven't said the one punctuation mark it is. Hyphens. Quotation um. marks. <laughs> Capital letters. Underscores. Speech marks. No. Slashes. Sentences. Underscores. Ampersands. Come on! Apostrophe. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Can we have the full quotation, please? When we first got together, one of the things me and Judy had in common was a passion for the correct use of the apostrophe. <laughs> full stop. Yeah. <laughs> Our next round is Was It Something I Said? in which each team has to work out who said the following quotations. It'll be from someone on the show tonight or from our virtual guest, Jeremy Kyle. So, is it something Jeremy Kyle could have said? Or is it a quote not designed to sow misery amongst confused, dysfunctional families? <laughs> so, first up is Richard's team. Who said the following? Was it Mickey, Gabby, Phil, me or Jeremy Kyle? Probably my clearest memory from childhood is my dad sitting in his overalls having a cup of tea with a newspaper under his arse to protect the chair. It does mm. sound a bit like something Jeremy Kyle might say in a sort of, uh, you know, this is how, this is where I'm from. Sort of yep. trying to stamp his badge of working class on himself well, could to it be take Gabby? the sin off the chav baiting that he now <laughs> indulges in. See, my thought is why does he need to protect this chair? <laughs> Presumably, a chair is harder than a newspaper. I don't see... The overalls! The overalls. <laughs> you know, work, Richard, work, you know that... <laughs> thing where people get dirty. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a... It was all kind of cockney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's all I heard. <laughs> I just thought of it. Yeah... Jeremy Kerr. You think Jeremy Kyle? Well, the answer is Phil Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, you, you can explain to Richard. Well, my, my dad was a high court judge and... Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, he used to wear overalls. Yeah. Because he was a caretaker in so, a block of flats. And, so there would um... be... I think the key thing is, Richard, there would be something on the overalls. <laughs> Look, 
I misread the quote, I got it wrong, and yes, I should be punished. <laughs> <laughs> and I must pay for my upbringing yeah. with my fabulously wealthy Nigerian father. <laughs> And the Norwegian heiress he married <laughs> on his rounds as a TV repairman. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, can we have the next quotation, please? I've not worn underwear for 20 years. <laughs> so, who said that? Was it Mickey, Gabby, Phil, me, or Jeremy Kyle? It could be something that Jeremy Kyle just said back to someone, just went, you know, they said, I, I'm really struggling, I've got two kids, I can't pay my rent. I go, well, I've not worn underwear for 20 years! Problems <laughs> are. <laughs> so you think it's Kyle? It could be Kyle, or it could, could be, be Daniels. Kyle, it? I mean, you... it could... I mean... <laughs> I don't think it's David. Uh, I really... I think if it, even, if, don't if, think if, it's even David. if it was true, I don't think David would say it. I think no. he would... It's a sort of fact he, he would have the dignity to keep concealed about himself. I don't know. I think it's one of those boasts that, you know, I don't like music, I don't like sport, and I haven't worn underwear for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. It sounds, sounds so rich and boomy in my head. <laughs> Although Flanagan's got a bit of a strut. I have to wear underwear, don't you worry about it. <laughs> I've heard Flanagan just needs a rope harness. <laughs> It just has to be. It just has to be kind of winched up his back. <laughs> I think. I, for some yeah, reason, I think Jeremy it's Kyle. Kyle. Yeah. You think it's Kyle? Yeah. I think is that it's your Kyle. answer. I'm gonna go with Jeremy Kyle. Well, the answer is Jeremy Kyle. Well done. Yeah. Next up, it's Mickey's team. Who said the following? Was it Richard, Ed, Phil, me, or Jeremy Kyle? I'm not too proud to self Google every so often. I can't imagine Richard saying that. Just <laughs> too self-assured and confident, he wouldn't have to check anything, really. So it's... Um, possibly Ed or possibly Mr Kyle, the reptile. I really don't like the fact that I'm now uh, even a choice. <laughs> I don't like the fact that people are actually going, it was either Ed Byrne or Jeremy Kyle. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> nice, is it? It's not nice being lumped in with Kyle, is no, it? No. no. So many Jeremy Kyle place. style things in your life. <laughs> is it ironic? Is it Richard? Because it's ironic. I'm not too proud to yeah. self Google. Poor. <laughs> 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 is that sitting here with Rory Brown? Okay, I think we should. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna go for a bit of a wild card yeah. here, and we think it may be Richard. Ah, well, the answer is me. <laughs> <laughs> You asked everything you said about the internet. Have you never Googled yourself? No. No, I'm too busy masturbating like a normal yeah. man. <laughs> Are you masturbating over your own name? <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> Phil, can we have the next quotation, please? I have a photographic memory. In an argument, I'll say, I know you don't really think that because three years ago you said the complete opposite. Who you think said that then? Ah, this Richard is... Ed, Phil, me, or Jeremy Kyle? This is the sort of thing that David, mm. he would remember every detail. Mm. And we know he likes talking about opposites. Yeah. Look <laughs> 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 Yeah, I think it's I me. don't think it'd be Phil. Possibly Ed. Could you Ed, say it for us, Ed? Ed? Just say it. Uh, I, have, I have a photographic memory. In an argument, I'll say I know you don't really think that because three years ago you said the complete opposite. Mm. It's not his yeah. colloquialism. No. So I think it's either David or Richard, but then I, I can't see... Give Richard. Jeremy Kyle a call and see if he can <laughs> say it that <laughs> <laughs> No, I think this is Kyle, because that's... Yeah, he, he, he argues for a living, doesn't he? Let's go and Kyle. It's, yeah, to come back three years on and they go, he goes, I oh, know you don't mean that, <laughs> because three years ago you said you were going to give up heroin and now you're back on the heroin. <laughs> I'm only doing it in the morning. That's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> so your answer is... Let's go, Kyle. Well, the correct answer is... Ed Burr. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> 
just I did, I didn't, I very acted, totally stilted yeah. like I'd never yeah. even seen this quote before. Because I think the, I said the complete That's opposite is a very Ed Byrne sort of turn of yeah. phrase. But you deliberately didn't say, deliberate, you didn't give yeah, it beans. Yeah. You didn't, yeah. you didn't land on opposite it. like you would have done. Extravagant. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. And a quick look at the scores tells me this week's winners are Richard and Ed. <laughs> Thank you to Nicky and Gabby, Richard and Ed, and to our guest narrator, Phil Daniels. And we leave you with the words of novelist John Galsworthy. The beginnings and endings of all human undertakings are untidy. And so, with that in mind, it's only left that I don't... To, that this is the... <laughs> there won't be the, the next... The other one will be, but this is finished. And so, bye! <laughs> David was probably trying to say that there's more on Sunday at five past ten. What he hadn't mentioned was that it's followed by a brand new series. Matt Berry is Toast of London on stage at 10.40. Next tonight, find out what's on the Gogglebox.